Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that have joined me ever since day one, thank you very much. And for those that are continuing to join me, I appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much. And for all the new Twitter followers that I have, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now please enjoy the final day of the 12 Days of Booking series in which I promise you it is going to be an absolutely phenomenal and dare I say strong style rivalry. the effing great and welcome to the season finale of the 12 days of booking here for 2017 here on the game changer exclusively on spreaker.com soundcloud itunes and mr ntg1990 on youtube so much has gone on in the last oh geez 11 podcasts that i have done of these and actually for those of you that may have not <clears throat> really known what's been going on i'm actually going to reveal what the card is Right here and right now, starting with the pre-show, I would have one of the matches be uh, Braun Strowman versus Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, where if Braun Strowman were to lose, he would have to join Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt's Broken Woken family. The other matchup that I have on here would be Bobby Roode versus Kevin Owens. And the fatal four-way elimination matchup for the U.S. title, pitting Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn versus Mike Bennett versus the United States champion, Jinder Mahal. On the main card, I would have the three stages of hell matchup, Sasha Banks taking on Bayley, Kenny Omega versus Finn Balor, the Intercontinental Championship Tournament Finals, pitting the nine-time Intercontinental Champion, The Miz, versus the nine-time Intercontinental Champion, Chris Jericho. Uh, Rosemary would take on Nikki Bella, Samoa Joe versus John Cena. The Universal title would be on the line as we would see Roman Reigns challenge Brock Lesnar. And two additional matches that I decided to add on here because the other two were actually rebookings throughout the years prior. So one of the matches I would have would be Kurt Angle versus Triple H one-on-one. There's actually a good story there. And the Royal Rumble winner, Asuka, challenging the SmackDown Live Women's Champion, Charlotte. So that just leaves one match and one match alone. And that being the main event of WrestleMania. And as you may have heard and guessed by the music, yes, I have gone with AJ Styles defending the WWE Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura. How can we do this? I'm about to tell you. So, obviously, it might be a little difficult for me to combine these two stories up, but it also would make more sense. So, I'm going to basically try combining both sides of these stories, putting them together, and it will all be a lot easier as soon as Fastlane has come and gone. So, 
We start off with, indeed, the Royal Rumble matchup. So obviously, as I was recording this, I was not anticipating a lot of things that were going on with the WWE United States Championship, but I'm going to go with my ideas as if that title tournament had not been announced. So the winner of a number one contender's six-pack challenge match would be Bobby Roode. So at Royal Rumble, it would be Bobby Roode one-on-one with AJ Styles. Honestly, this is one of those matches where you could have really good build-up, definitely some history between Bobby Roode and AJ Styles. And even I would love for them to hint at the idea that uh, Bobby Roode can say to AJ that, hey, I have beaten Shinsuke Nakamura twice. I only need to beat you once to become WWE Champion. And of course, speaking of Shinsuke Nakamura, he is entered into the Royal Rumble matchup. That, of course, is indeed true. It is indeed going to happen. So we move into the Royal Rumble matchup in which Shinsuke Nakamura does indeed win the Royal Rumble, last eliminating Randy Orton. So with that being said, we move into the WWE title matchup. Bobby Roode versus AJ Styles. AJ Styles going in as the face, and Bobby Roode actually going in as a heel. This is kind of an experimentation deal in which we were going to have Bobby Roode turn heel for a brief period of time just so that this rivalry can definitely conclude in a great way. So, AJ Styles, Bobby Roode, uh, it ends with Bobby Roode actually winning the WWE Championship. So, that would actually throw a lot of people for the loop. And so, people are thinking, like, wow, are we getting Bobby Roode versus Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania? So, kind of keeps people on their toes. Uh, but the title reign is not going to last too long. The following SmackDown Live, we see Randy Orton getting heated on Shinsuke Nakamura for eliminating him. Slowly starting to turn heel, and we see Bobby Roode versus AJ Styles in the rematch. But Bobby Roode actually gets himself intentionally disqualified to hold on to the WWE Championship. And the week following, we would have a rematch for the WWE title, in which we would say Styles versus Bobby Roode take place inside of the steel cage. And also during this event, we see. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and Randy Orton challenging the Usos for the Tag Team Championships in which Randy Orton actually cost them the matchup, hitting Shinsuke Nakamura with the RKO and the Usos to Nakamura. And this sets up again for what is to come. Uh, the, tag te- the title matchup inside the cage, AJ Styles overcomes the odds and he regains the WWE Championship on a SmackDown Live. So... We go, we're going into fast lane, and we have a very unique situation here. We have Shinsuke Nakamura, who wants Randy Orton for basically beating the crap out of him. We have Bobby Roode, who does have a legitimate rematch clause against AJ Styles. So, how do we really fix this? Well, kind of an easy fix there. We announced that it'll be Randy Orton versus Shinsuke Nakamura at fast lane, but there's going to be a little more to it. Because Randy Orton also wants to be in the WWE title picture, and he wants to get his shot at WrestleMania. So, during that SmackDown Live, we have Randy Orton versus AJ Styles, in which Randy Orton actually pins Styles. And we see Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bobby Roode. If Bobby Roode loses, his rematch clause would be null and void, and Shinsuke Nakamura will continue to have his title shot at WrestleMania. So... Bobby Roode falls to Shinsuke Nakamura to the Kinshasa, and it's announced that at Fastlane, Randy Orton versus Shinsuke Nakamura will be for the title shot at WrestleMania. And they also make the announcement that AJ Styles will defend his title against John Cena at Fastlane. And I know this is going to kind of tie in with the previous storyline that it had going on. So at Fastlane, we do see... John Cena lose to AJ Styles due to Samoa Joe interference. That way, John Cena can go focus on Samoa Joe on Raw. And also, we have Shinsuke Nakamura defeating Randy Orton in an instant classic and keeping his right to be the number one contender for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. And the buildup, honestly, you guys, is just 
so so amazing. We basically can have you know pick your poison mat matches for Nakamura and AJ Styles where they're basically trying to one up each other, uh, but it'll all escalate into a final confrontation, a face off between Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles the week before WrestleMania. And now how this would basically work is that we have AJ Styles talking about how he's wrestled all over the world and that he has beaten some of the best. He's beaten Bobby Roode. He has beaten John Cena. He's beaten this, this guy, this guy, this guy. He's beaten, the list goes on and on. But one guy that he has not yet beaten yet is Shinsuke Nakamura. At WrestleMania, he's playing to do that. And Nakamura basically just says, you have to remember the last time we met, I did indeed beat you. But you also gave me the fight of my life. So at WrestleMania, you will have to believe that I'm going to risk everything to win the WWE Championship. They don't have an altercation. They don't fight. They just have a great stare down with AJ Styles holding the WWE Championship above their heads. We finally reach WrestleMania. We see Shinsuke Nakamura coming out to, well... I don't think that, you know, my words can really do justice for it. So just give me a couple minutes and enjoy the beauty that could be happening at WrestleMania. theme song just never gets old and she's Lee England does an amazing job with that with that violin he is just instantly talented he's got gold on the tip of his fingers when he plays that song but anyway you guys yes definitely would have that as the store the you know song going into Nakamura's entrance at Wrestlemania AJ Styles having his deal word you know he's got the you know they don't want none they don't want none Maybe bringing out some classic AJ Styles phenomenal gear like he wore in TNA Impact Wrestling. Something like that. Maybe even have a little bit of the you know Japanese patches on there. Represent his respect for the Japanese culture. And of course, we have the introductions. And we hear them just saying, of course, you know, this following contest for the WWE Championship. Introducing first the challenger, Shinsuke Nakamura. And the champion, AJ Styles. Bell rings. These guys just go right at each other. And I would also recreate one of the best moments that they did in New Japan. And that was the moment where AJ Styles just does like a finger gun. Points, shoots at Nakamura. Nakamura just grabs it. And he just eats it. That was just an awesome moment. I would recreate that moment here in New Japan as well. So... This matchup definitely goes as you would expect. It's physical. It's very fast-paced. These guys are given everything that they have. We see, like, the tiebreaker from uh, AJ Styles. We see Nakamura doing his knees uh, to the corner. We see him do his knees to the ground. See him just laying it all on the line on AJ Styles. 
Uh, we see him do his suplex. AJ Styles hit, locks in the calf killer, calf crusher, whatever it's called. We see everything above and beyond. We see uh, AJ Styles hit the Styles Clash. One, two, Nakamura kicks out. Nakamura hits the locks in an arm bar on AJ. Uh, he even hits one Kinshasa. One, two, Styles kicks out. Uh, Styles hits the phenomenal forearm. One, two, Nakamura kicks out. Nakamura goes for a second. Kinshasa, one, two, Styles again kicks out. It's just one of the most absolutely pandemonium main event matches you'll ever see at WrestleMania. So, there are actually two ways that I could go about doing this. And it, one's a riskier kind of way, but another one is the safer way. So I'm going to give you guys both of the ideas that I have. So let's start with the safer way. The safer way is the fact that we see Nakamura and Styles definitely go, you know, pillar to post, brutalizing each other. And it gets to the point where Nakamura does what he did to AJ at in Japan a couple of years ago, where... He basically just, you know, hits the Kinshasa again, 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 again. And it's like, I think, uh, four Kinshasas. And then AJ Styles, he's just slowly getting up. He is completely just, he looks like he's got the faraway look in his eye. He's just completely in a trance. And he's just saying, come on, come on, every single time the Kinshasa has been hit. And after one final fifth Kinshasa, Nakamura pins AJ Styles to win the WWE Championship. It's Nakamura celebrating. AJ Styles is, get, is in the ring. He's looking over at Nakamura. Nakamura is now holding his new trophy. He's thinking that AJ probably wants to go again. AJ extends his hand out, and he shakes the hand of Shinsuke Nakamura and raises his hand. AJ admits that on this night, Nakamura got him, but this also will set up a lot of great rematches in the near future. So Nakamura celebrating, it's all good, fine and dandy. Now let's go into the probably more riskier idea that I have, because here's the thing. Reason why I did a lot of stuff with Nakamura and had him do like these matches with Bobby Roode and with Randy Orton was to really build him up and make him into something. Well, a lot of people have to remember that in Japan, he definitely had his own faction called Chaos, and it was one of the most brutal factions I think I've ever seen in quite some time. So we're going to try and recreate something like that. So how do we do that, per se? Well, Nakamura has been hitting his, you know, Kinshasa one, two, three times, fourth time. AJ Styles, he's saying, come at me, come at me. Nakamura, he's going for the fifth time. Re uh, AJ Styles ducks it. Nakamura hits the referee. Hopefully, it's one of those points where the referee actually can take it. Uh, and then we see AJ Styles get, roll onto the bot, under the bottom rope. Nakamura is just in shock. He's, he's trying to get the referee up. Referee is just completely out cold. Nakamura turns around. Bam! Phenomenal forearm by AJ Styles. Covers him. One, it seems like one, two, three, four, five. They're counting basically to ten from in the audience. AJ Styles is trying to wake up the referee, trying to get him. Uh, back and then we hear the crowd make some noise. In comes the new SmackDown Live Women's Champion, Asuka. Asuka comes in, wham! Kicks Styles in the head. Styles is just down. He is just completely in shock. Next thing you know, here comes Kyrie Sane from NXT. Kyrie Sane is up. She goes to the top rope. Bam! Hits her elbow. And then one more person enters the fray. Hideo Itami. Hideo Itami comes in, hits the GTS on AJ Styles. Styles is just brutalized. He's on his knees, completely stunned. Nakamura, he looks at Hideo, he looks at Kyrie, he looks at Asuka, and he gives a nice big old smile after a few moments. And then, wham! Kinshasa to AJ Styles, covers him. Everybody gets out of the ring, they revive the referee. Referee comes to one, two, three. Nakamura wins the WWE Championship via shenanigans, we'll say. And we have this amazing, amazing picture of Shinsuke Nakamura, Hideo Itami, 
Kyrie Sane, and Asuka, the new SmackDown Live Women's Champion, all in the ring celebrating this huge momentous deal. And honestly, really how you make that into a thing on SmackDown Live, you just have Nakamura say that he's been disrespected ever since he came here. He's been put in matches that obviously they don't make sense, and he's been losing to some random jobbers like, you know, Chinder Mahal. But now he is going to do what nobody in Japan who has come to WWE has done, and he is going to take back everything from WWE, and he is going to take WWE by the throat, and they are going to destroy anything that they see fit. So they build up into basically a, gr a really good faction, and honestly, I would love to see Shinsuke Nakamura with the WWE title, Hideo Itami with the Cruiserweight title, Asuka with the SmackDown Live Women's Championship, and if they can do this, this would be awesome, have Kairi Zayn win the Raw Women's title. And for a lot of people that are just saying, like, well, wait, Kairi Zayn's on Raw, Hideo Itami's on Raw, they can't be doing this, they can't be doing this, this is like brand... You know, basically, like you know, violating the brand split, and their excuse is that we're, it's like you know we're awesome. We don't need anybody to tell us where to go because we're awesome. We go where we want. We do what we want. So they're basically almost like a Japanese version of NWO. So you're creating something that's basically anarchy with a great faction and a lot of great talent. And you're giving us something that has never been seen before in WWE. And you can definitely build that into something absolutely amazing. Asuka has that undefeated streak. She's going to be very tough to beat. Kyrie Sane, yes, she has you know that face that looks like she can just smile all the time. But I can imagine her being just this ruthless, aggressive young lady. Hideo Itami does have that mean streak. We saw that in NXT. He definitely can do it. And Shinsuke Nakamura... He is definitely a good baby face, but I can see him being a tremendous heel. And just him doing heel tactics and having that classic Shinsuke smile, you cannot tell me that wouldn't be a sight to see. So that is how I would book AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the main event of WrestleMania. I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it. I'm hoping that the people who suggested this, uh, Tim and Elise, and Elise, that they enjoyed this. Uh, I'm pretty sure Elise probably enjoyed it because his her man got on top, and that's Shinsuke Nakamura. So, you're welcome. And AJ Styles, I don't see him really being affected too badly by this because he's been WWE Champion. Well, he's on his second reign, but in the way that I'm booking it, he's been champion three times. He's putting on great matches. Whether he's winning or he's losing, he's still going to look absolutely amazing. And he's not going to, you know, be losing all the time. It's just going to be one of those things where at a WrestleMania moment, it is Shinsuke's time to shine. So, again, that's how I book it. And this is going to conclude the 12 days of booking here for 2017. Thank you guys so much for listening in to all 12 days. I will have a link for all of them ready in the uh, Facebook fan page as well as on my Twitter at Real FN Game. It will also be on the Facebook fan page, like I said, facebook.com forward slash changing up the game. Tomorrow is a new day. I've already made some huge announcements regarding the new year. I'm looking forward to seeing how they all work. It is going to be absolutely amazing. So thank you guys so much for joining me here, and I will see you guys next year, 2018. The Game Changer is here, and just when you think you know the rules, I change the game completely. Remember that. Thank you so much, you guys. Have yourself a happy new year, and by all means, 2018 is going to be awesome. Bye-bye.